My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we begin this morning of prayer, I want to take a moment to just remember two of our priests who passed away yesterday, Monsignor Royal Vatican and Monsignor Jim Lodney, two faithful and dedicated priests who served the people of the Archdiocese for many years. So let us and trust them today to our Heavenly Father and ask that perpetual light shine upon them. Especially keep them in our prayers today. In our Gospel this morning, our Lord speaks words of consolation to a mother who has lost her only son. Jesus says, do not weep. I think today we need to hear these words in light of the summer of sorrow that we have been experiencing in the church. And I know that these events have been weighing heavy on all of us, and we feel especially the pain of the children who have been hurt. So today, Jesus speaks these words of hope to those children and to each one of us. Do not weep. Jesus does not leave us alone in our pain. He does not abandon us in the trials we face. We see in this gospel this morning the true heart of Jesus, his solidarity with us in our suffering. The gospel tells us that when the Lord saw her, he was moved with pity. This is how it is with Jesus. This is who he is. Jesus sees us, and in his love for us, he's moved to compassion. He watches over us. Always we are in his presence. And in his love and mercy, bring us life and hope. So he speaks to that boy who has died, and he says, young man, I tell you, arise. And he sits up, and he begins to speak. My dear brothers and sisters, we need to believe again in the power of our Lord's word, the power of his promise. We need to go to Jesus. We need to open our hearts to his merciful love. There is no wound that Jesus will not heal, no sin. No matter how stubborn, no matter how hidden, that he will not forgive. The Lord still sees us in this time of trial, and he's moved with pity. And he calls each one of us to rise up and to walk, to give glory to God with our lives, to live with purity of purpose and integrity of heart. Every time there is a crisis in the church, it is a crisis of saints. It is a crisis of Christians not living, not living out our baptismal promises, not striving for the greater things that we are made for. St. Paul says in the first reading of today's Mass, we strive eagerly for the greatest, greatest spiritual gifts. It is true. God wants to give us his beautiful gifts. He has a beautiful plan for our lives. Sometimes it seems to me that we sell ourselves too short. We settle for so much less than what God is promising to us. We are made to be saints. This is the truth about who we are. We should accept nothing less for our lives. So, my dear brothers and sisters, this moment in the church is a call for saints. It is a call for you and for me to arise and to become the men and women we are created to be. We are the ones who are called to renew and rebuild the church. Each one of us has a duty, the duty of becoming saints in the 21st century. And we do that 
by striving for greater things that God wants to give us, the gifts of holiness and beauty and love and truth. This is who we are. And if we want a church that is purified and centered on Jesus Christ and his mission, that church begins with you and with me. It is a beautiful call to participate in the uh, reform and renewal of the church. It's a great blessing. In the gospel, we hear those touching words. And Jesus gave him to his mother. Jesus has given all of us to his mother. What a beautiful gift. So let us turn to Mary and ask her help to rise to this moment and to be the saints that we are called to be. Our Lady Queen of the Angels, pray for us. In the name of the Father and Son.